Hello, and welcome to my spoiler review for The Marvels, where I'm aware that while some of you are here to celebrate the film, some of you are here to get all the tea because you don't want to watch the film. And that's fine. That's fine. We're all, you know, two opposite sides of the spectrum in one place. Welcome. That's awesome. I'm excited for us to coexist. Uh, try, try to be nice in the comments. All right, so anyway, uh, in my non-spoiler review, I said that this movie didn't put on its business hat and that it didn't, it doesn't try to make sure that it appeals to the broadest group of people possible. And some of you might be like, why does it have to? Well, when a movie costs this much money to make and is part of a larger franchise, well then, the filmmakers uh, and everybody associated with the film have a responsibility. Uh, and so that, that's unfortunate. And some of you said, well, Grace, what would you do? And that's a very complex question and answer. But I did come up with one thing uh, that was like, I, when I was doing my notes, I was like, oh, I'd do this. And that's that I would have had an, oh, I would have opened the film with Carol's Revenge. They could have called the, the movie that. That would have been funny instead of the Marvels. Carol's Revenge. I think that could have done well, maybe, right? But basically, she took revenge on the supreme intelligence from the first movie because she made good on her threat and apparently has no moral quandary whatsoever as to whether or not artificial intelligence has a right to life because she killed that b <laughs> I thought that was funny. They used a lot of clips in this movie. And I thought, I mean, a lot of people saw the first Captain Marvel movie. I don't know why they felt they needed to show clips there. Uh, but they did have to, like, try and fill people in on Ms. Marvel's background. And I thought, I thought, that, I thought that was a little interesting uh, that they, they did that so extensively here. What did you think of that? I mean, I was fine because you want people to be able to follow the story. But that was, that was an interesting crutch that they ended up using. Maybe that's one of the things they did when they were um, editing the film to, right up to the very end. So, though, to see Carol, you know, uh, on the Cree homeworld, fully powered up, her helmet, her helmet up, uh, her eyes glowing, and nobody able to stop her as she exacted her revenge, she seemed almost like a god. I loved the cool, calm, and, uh, well, she was anything but cool, calm, and collected, but that's, that's how she presented herself. And she just, she looked, looked amazing. I just, I really loved it. It's one of the coolest visuals, and I think that Carol, uh, the MCU, Carol Danvers continues to deliver really fantastic visuals. Uh, I love her raw power, especially as the MCU has reimagined it. She's way more powerful than she's ever been in the comics here. It's great. I don't know why they haven't adapted it to the comics. I try and read every new Captain Marvel comic. They keep canceling that title and bringing on a new writer. And uh, the, the latest one wasn't bad, uh, but I think, I have to tell you, Captain Marvel is a character that has never really connected uh, the Carol Dan any version really. They've, oh, I mean, they're 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 iconic, I guess you could say. Certainly very well known, but you know, I, I'm surprised. You know, Kev well, I mean, I'm surprised that Kevin Feige is surprised that he would have trouble adapting a character that's never really worked. Just like I told him, he shouldn't. You know, Marvel now didn't work in the comics, isn't going to work here. So even if somebody could write a good Captain Marvel comic, and there have been a few, I've enjoyed some over the years, but the character just for some reason does not connect. And so the movie version just isn't going to either, it seems. I mean, it's not. She's not. But anyway, uh, she's super powerful, and I get goosebumps every time that they let her be very powerful. And I'm surprised that it's so rare, because Kevin Feige keeps telling everyone she's the most powerful Avenger, but is reluctant to have her show it. And I've seen this criticism. Some of you've shared it with me, um, and I want to be respectful of that, but it, it frustrates me too, that, you know, Carol hasn't earned that title of being the most powerful Avenger. Well, you know, so many superheroes, uh, you know, have an accident, and then they get these great powers, you know, and then they become, you know, Carol, Carol had like a serious accident, and the result was her being super powerful. And so... I mean, I, I guess maybe you feel her storylines aren't good enough, but and I could, I think that you could to some degree have a point there, but I don't see why out of the gate there's anything unbelievable about her just being very powerful. I mean, are you going to have, I mean, I wonder if you'll have the same problem with Sentry, if Sentry ever does show up. Uh, but anyway, the way the MCU has reimagined Carol, at least she has cool powers. She doesn't have any of that going for her in the comics. Uh, so, like a god, Carol destroyed a world. She destroyed the Kree world because she destroyed the Kree sun, Hala, 
Uh, and that when, and what went with it was the planet's air and water, leaving the Kree on the brink of extinction. Uh, and so that's the basic setup of the movie. And the reason that it couldn't be used in the advertising, I think a lot of people were like, what's this movie about? And the reason that it couldn't have been set up at the beginning of the actual movie once you were watching it is that they decided to make that the big third act reveal, which I, I appreciated it. I was like, oh, that's a good reveal. But seeing everybody's reaction to the movie, maybe they told the story out of order. Maybe they shouldn't have done that. But really, this is about what Carol did uh, and why she is afraid of herself and kind of hates herself in some ways. And on that note, why she decided to stay away from Earth. We've been wondering where she was all this time. And I think the MCU is like, well, she could have visited. And we see that she comes back. She's come back occasionally, you know, like when her friend Maria was sick, as we see in some flashbacks. But for the most part, she has stayed away from Earth. Uh, and this is why. This is the reason they came up with. And, you know, I have to say, I think it's a pretty good reason. I, I, it works for me. Uh, even though they could have they could have explored it more, but then they're exploring Loki in depth and everybody says it's boring, which, I mean, I'm loving that too. So, you know, I think this is like the anti-Loki. I mean, they're kind of like cut from the same cloth, but whereas Loki is very long and drawn out as a Disney Plus series, this is a short hour and 45 minute movie. And it seems nobody likes either one. I think that the MCU might just be at a point right now where people just you know, need a break and they're just disliking everything that comes out of it. I mean, they turned into DC real quick. It like almost happened. Like they started to slide into DC territory and then it seems like overnight they've, they've woken up and Kevin Feige's like, what happened? You, you know, as they, as they said in uh, The Dark Knight, either die a hero or lo live long enough to become the villain. I think that was from The Dark Knight, right? Uh, I think that's happening to Kevin Feige. All right, so, and speaking of Loki, Loki has said in season two, hey, sometimes even gods have a bad day and have an emotional response. And that's clearly what happened to Carol. But also, is there no galactic news report, right? Or how about, I don't know, diplomacy? I mean, the Kree know who Nick Fury is from the Captain Marvel movie. So I would think that they would tell on Carol. They'd be like, get Earth on the phone. What the heck? And they would demand that Earth be accountable for their hero. I certainly would. I wouldn't just be like, well, you know, the Cree. I wouldn't be like, well, I guess we're, I, guess, I mean, maybe they're proud people. I don't know. But I mean, nobody on the entire planet was like, I think we should give Earth a call. Uh, or go take, a, I mean, they, it's, they apparently, you know, in the MCU, all uh, alien species are humanoid. Why don't they just say we're going to move in on Earth? Like the scrolls have decided to do, right? And Earth is like, it's getting awfully crowded down here. You guys got to go find your own planets. All right, so. And then the other side of the big reveal is that Darben... Uh, is actually the new leader of the Kree Empire, which they were like, dun -dun! and you're like, oh yeah, that was a good surprise. But I don't know, maybe it would have helped earlier on to establish that that's who she was. <laughs> Who's this person? You'll find out in 40 minutes. And you're like, hmm. Uh, and the reason, I mean, I did like this movie. I'm telling you, I liked it. I mean, some of you said maybe my, my below rock bottom expectations might have helped. But yeah, I mean, I thought it was fun and I thought it had good action as we're going to discuss. But anyway, but we're also going to, we're doing a little bit of a post-mortem too. All right, so, and the reason that Darben wants the ancient Kree negabands, uh, congrats to everybody who said those were negabands, uh, is to rip open jump points, who, which have never looked so good, by the way. I was like, those are some sharp jump points. I love them. I love them. They traveled through the jump points. I don't ever recall even the Guardians of the Galaxy doing it that way. I thought that was cool, the way that like, they would like, voom, 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 like the colors and just go faster and faster. I was like, this is fun. It was like a roller coaster getting going. Uh, but anyway, uh, she wants to rip open jump points and find and bring new air, water, and a sun to her people. And to, exact her, and to exact her own revenge, she decides to get those things from the worlds that Carol cares about. Uh, a Scree refugee planet for, to get the air. That's Emperor Droge, by the way, who was name dropped on Secret Invasion. Remember they were like, he has a colony. Apparently he, was like a, he had like a jail in it or like a, a prison system. I was like, it seems, it seems pretty nice to me. And also, by the way, they have a much better uh, budget for scroll makeup here. I was like, now those are scrolls. Uh, then there's the aquatic musical planet where, the, uh, where Darben gets water from, and we will definitely talk about that. And then finally, the Earth for our sun. It's always about our sun. Our sun is so valuable. Everybody loves our sun. But that was like a genuinely good threat. I was like, oh, we need that. Uh, but, you know, Darben like, didn't even get close to taking it. She got like a, like a little a wisp of sun, and then she was done. But when this plan was finally revealed, 
I thought it was pretty good. I thought it made sense. I thought it was simple. And I thought, you know, it was, it was, I liked the eye for an eye aspect of it. Uh, and I'm really glad. I got nervous, you know, before Darben was revealed she was doing a fake out. I was like, don't make the all female movie end of the, with everybody forgiving each other and giving each other hugs. Please don't do that. And luckily they did not. Although, why is Carol so gullible? I guess she wanted to be forgiven. And I wish maybe they'd played that up, actually, now that I think about it. That would have been a little bit better. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so Darben was like, I'm not making up with you. And so they had to kill her, right? So while Darben failed to make, well, she killed herself. Well, she fa- and I, by the way, I immediately spotted all the veins on her arm. I was like, that bracelet's killing you. But she knew it. She knew it. And she said she was willing to give up her life for the Cree. Uh, which I guess is why she was their leader. She became their leader. Uh, but she, ha- while she wasn't impressive in life, she had an amazing death scene. Ah, oh, wow. Although, again, no- another Marvel villain is killed in the movie that they're introduced. Why do they keep doing that? Although they're never particularly good. So, I mean, except for Hela, I'll never get over them getting rid of Hela. Uh, although I think, you know, Kate Blanchett pulled a Harrison Ford and said, you, you, sh- you best kill my character off because I ain't coming back. Um... But this was an amazing shot. And I was, I was looking for, uh, screen, uh, for screen grabs and stuff for my, my non-spoiler review. And I was amazed to see that they used this shot in the final trailer, which just came out on Monday night. I didn't watch that trailer because the timing was inconvenient. And also I was like, I'm going to see the movie. I mean, I saw it the very next day for my press screening. And I was like, that's too close. I'm not watching this. Um, but I think it's a shame that they put that in the trailer. Although some of you, was that one of the shots that convinced some of you to maybe give this a whirl? Because I know that some of you felt the final trailer was the best one. But yeah, that was amazing. I was so cool. I mean, the visual was just fantastic. It looked like a comic book, uh, you know, full page panel, like a splash page or the cover of a comic. I mean, I just thought it was great. And again, the raw power on display was really awe-inspiring. I loved it. I love glowy power. I mean, who doesn't? Uh, and she ripped a hole in time and space. And again, it was very well done VFX-wise, which of course is what leads us to one of our end credit scenes that teases the X-Men and also Mo- uh, Monica's mother, Maria, uh, which we'll discuss in a separate video, as well as the other end credit scene that teases the Young Avengers. So those will be separate videos. All right, so as for the main movie, back to the Negabands, I do continue to think it's weird and sloppy to talk about basically bracelets. I'm like, some are, some are a little bit bigger than others, but, you know, these are all bracelets, my friends. And to not somehow how connect Sean Chi's Ten Rings, especially because of the end credit sequence of that movie. Like, it just was weird to me, and I was like, how is he not a part of this conversation? All right, next, let's talk about tying in other MCU, I guess on that note, let's talk about the other MCU elements that they did tie into this movie, because that's what a lot of you are interested in. I was genuinely surprised that the scrolls had shown up. I saw that it had leaked after the fact, like after I saw the movie and I was getting, again, my materials together, I said, I saw that, oh, the scroll stuff did get out. But I had, I had not seen it. And I'm really glad that I didn't, because that was, a, it was not only a fun surprise to see them again so quickly, but also to see them done, uh, I think, much better than we just saw them. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and also, though, they didn't shapeshift. Uh, that's interesting to me. It's like you, you have a bigger budget and none of them shapeshift. Although then I realized that in the comics, the scrolls never shapeshift when they're by themselves, when they're like when they're just together. And it's like, but you have a shapeshifting ability. Wouldn't you maybe use it? I mean, wouldn't you maybe use it like for like, I don't know, cosmetic purposes or fashion purposes, right? Pop culture? I mean, I mean, and, and it, cause, uh, they're, it's interesting because they all wear the same thing, though. Like, it's weird. It's interesting. Although maybe that could be a commentary on some cultures that are more group oriented than others. Uh, although that's going away. Social media is like, everybody's like, why are we doing the group oriented thing? It seems not to be as good. I find that development in uh, Asia in particular quite interesting. Uh, if you'll see some articles about the way society is changing over there with uh, the younger generations. Uh, all right. So yeah, but none of them shape shift. And you know, that is a little weird, but they look good. They look like they look like they were out of the comics. And when they were sitting across the negotiating table from the Cree, I was like, this reminds me of so many comics I've read because of course the Cree and the scroll are for better or worse, really locked in, locked in a horrible dance together. And you know, of course, Hulkling, who's eventually, I think going to show up. I mean, let's hope he of course is a product of both those societies societies and later brings them together as Emperor Hulkling. Ah, oh, we have so far to go. Although at this point, I don't know if anybody wants to get there. That's kind of Kevin Feige's fault. Yeah. But anyway, all right. 
and a lot of scrolls died. Again, there were a lot of them left on that planet. I was watching with Kamala. I was like, damn, there's a lot of them down there. So Captain Marvel is the Annihilator, or is that the unintentional Annihilator? <laughs> Not quite as catchy. Uh, I don't think that's a good brand for her, even though it's the truth, right? She's like, oh, wah, wah. Oh, she's killed a bunch of people yet again and let them down. She just lets, I mean, maybe that, I can see why she doesn't come back to Earth. And maybe that's why Nick Fury's not calling her up, asking her where she is too much. Because she does get a lot of people killed and lets everybody down. Oh, so I guess that balances out her being the most powerful. She's the most powerful Avenger, but also the most unreliable. <laughs> With great power comes no responsibility. Oh, that stuff's hilarious. I, I mean, I think I would address these things. All right, so anyway, I appreciated that realism with all those uh, scrolls being killed and the wake-up call that Carol gives Kamala, I think because of her military background. She's like, we can't save everyone. We have to be able to save those that we can. And with you, with you dragging your butt here, Kamala, if you don't get on this spaceship, we're all going to go. And uh, I mean, I agreed with Carol on that one. And I liked, again, you know, I don't think they use Carol's military background enough either. She should be doing push-ups and sit-ups, a lot of hoorahs. I mean, she wasn't in the Marines, but I mean, I, I think there's like a commonality amongst all the military branches. All right, with the scrolls that they do save, Valkyrie shows up, uh, uh, you know, with the Rainbow Bridge, right, uh, to either take them to New Asgard or someplace else, but it doesn't matter because the whole reason that Valkyrie shows up is to give a wink to those who ship her and Carol, right? And even Brie Larson and Tessa Thompson have teased Carol and Valkyrie as a couple themselves at events and online on social media. Uh, and I think the movie goes as far as Marvel is comfortable right now by having them have share that kiss on the cheek. Uh, I mean, there's definitely a vibe there. It's an extremely quick scene, but I think based on how strongly Brie Larson and Tessa Thompson seem to connect, either in real life or they really did their acting homework, but I felt the connection and it really made an impression. So I, I thought it was good. Also, speaking of quick, there is an extremely quick nod to the draped fabric sleeves of Monica Rambeau's original costume. And I wish we had gotten one shot from the front to see how they looked head on before Monica ripped them off. But I loved it. I was like, oh, that's a nod to the original costume. Fantastic. And then also Kamala trying to come up with a superhero name for Monica pitched Photon. Did she mention Spectrum? Or there was another one too, I forget what the other one was. But I'm, I always think of Monica as either Photon or Spectrum. Although Spectrum is also a cable company, so I would advise the MCU for, oh, 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 against using that because the jokes will just come even more fast and furiously. Okay, next, let's talk about the two craziest scenes in the movie, which aren't any crazier than anything that James Gunn has done in his Guardians of the Galaxy films, yet for some reason, here in this movie, this is where some people are drawing the line. They're like, that's too silly. We just can't get over it. And it's like, didn't you just watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? That was ridiculous. And everybody was okay with that, me included. But I was okay with these scenes. Now, I am, and I didn't think I would be, because as many of you know, I'm not a fan of musical theater. So the musical theater planet was something I was really scared about. I was like, oh no. But once they got there and the, I saw how it played out, I actually kind of liked it. And here's why. Hearing Carol have to explain her situation to Monica and Kamala was so fun because I think all of us have been in a situation where we've had to explain something real stupid that we've done to our, to our friends, right? You're like, all right, like you got to come clean. And yeah, they have a good laugh. So it was funny. I liked that. Uh, Monica, who is not a great singer, which I relate to because I'm not a very good singer, uh, but her trying to talk in song, where is the prince, right? I thought that was great. She gave it a good try. I just thought that was hilarious, and I thought Teona Paris sold it really well. And then on that note, the guy who announced them to the court, though, he was, you know, a native of the planet. He was a great singer. He was so good, in fact, that I was like, ah, oh, I will allow this musical theater uh, singing, because this is actually quite good. I also liked his, the gold foil on his temples. He looked great. I was like, no, uh, no wonder they upgraded their costumes uh, while they were there. They're like, hey, as long as we're here, let's, glam let's get a glam up. Uh, and then when the king, a.k.a. Carol's platonic husband, entered a political marriage, which maybe seems to underscore the Valkyrie situation, situation even more, he was played by Park Soo uh, Joon, and he didn't do a particularly good job. I think Park Soo Joon is not a very good comedian, but he's not there to be funny. 
Uh, but now the gag was, of course, that he could both, he was bilingual, they said. He could sing, but also, you know, but also talk regularly. Uh, they call it talk singing, and that, that means Rex Harrison should really be their king. Oh, I love Rex Harrison. He was famous for his uh, talk singing. He's so good at it. That would have been a, a, good, a good gag. Uh, but Park Soo-Joon, Soo -Joon, he wasn't particularly funny. The gags they gave him weren't particularly funny, but it didn't really matter at that point because the gag was over and they moved on to this crazy dress that materialized out of nowhere. It seemed to, it seemed to materialize with Kennergy. I, I don't know if you felt that was the same situation, but maybe because we just recently saw that and you know, it was just, it was so silly, but Brie Larson believed in it so strongly and, and everyone else just went with it that it sold the gag to me. I was like, okay. That's how her dress appears. I'm fine with it. So the scene, I mean, I didn't love the musical theater planet scene, but I thought it was okay. And I suspect that it was added for overseas markets uh, where their movies, their, their, um, their local films have, uh, you know, uh, a lot of dancing and singing. So, you know, maybe this will appeal to them too. But the crazy scene, the other crazy scene that I absolutely loved was the one with the flirkin kittens. Ah, oh, that was great. Now, the, I had heard about the Flurkin Kittens way before the trailers and posters revealed them, but the point is, is that pretty much everybody knew about them going in. But I didn't know that those little brains that were invading the Sabre space station were their eggs. That was a great misdirect. You know, I was thinking like Alien or something, you know, the movie Alien or something like that. I was really concerned about those little brains that were popping up everywhere. And then once we, and then, so they, so that was, uh, that was fun. And they were like, oh, it's all these little Flurkin Kittens. But then the space station was damaged and they realized they didn't have enough escape pods to get everybody back down to earth. And you know, and Nick Fury is like, come up with a come up with a solution. And then they cut to the, what their solution was, and that was the idea of letting the Flurkins eat everyone because they could just hack them up down below. Apparently, as you know, as we've seen, you know, getting eaten by a flurkin isn't a death sentence. It actually is transportation because a bunch of cats, the small cats, are easier to put into one escape pod than everybody on the space station. Uh, so, and then, so then they had to enact their plan. And Nick Fury and Carol Danvers love flurkins so much you can feel the love through the screen. And I, so that made me like them. I was like, I was like, are we really doing this? And then I was, and they were so excited about it. I, it made me excited too. I was like, okay, let's do this. And the surrealness of the scene, which was shot like a horror movie, but with cute kittens. I mean, that was great. And the PA system, someone coming on there telling everybody to let the flirk and eat you, but no one could really let themselves do it. So Carol and Kamala uh, had to sacrifice them basically while Monica was looking something up. That, that was great. And then they had played Memories from Cats came on. It just, I thought the gag worked beautifully. And at least in my theater, everyone was laughing real hard. So, uh, you know, everybody liked it when they saw it in the press screening. I guess something was lost by the time they went to write their reviews. I also liked when they were crash landing in that one escape pod and Fury asked Kamala's brother if he was praying and that made the brother self-conscious so he stopped and Fury was like, keep going, we need all the help we can get. And I thought that was a good gag too. All right, and also when they landed uh, in uh, you know, basically Battery Park and there were some people picnicking and all these cats came out, flurkin, and were coughing up people on, you know, onto the lawn. And I thought, I thought that was fun. Okay, now let's talk action and how this movie has a surprising amount of it that's surprisingly well done. The switching, which I hated in the trailers and clips, was great when they were allowed to show it fully played out because it played out for a really long time. Those sequences were long and I, I thought in a good way and the, they were very well choreographed and shot. I thought that the constant moving of the characters but also the camera really gave the, the film an energy which was unique. I liked that. I also love the montage where they practice switching so they can get a handle on it, to turn a negative into a positive, to make it something that works to their advantage. And good for them, good for them, what a great life lesson. But from tossing the balls, right, to jumping rope, to walking with books on their head, it really felt like a fun slumber party, but a productive one. So as I said, I love seeing them, you know, learn to harness the switching. Uh, but also to work together as a team. And then, to, as I said, to turn a negative into a positive. And with this movie in particular, that's a very important lesson because there's so much negativity around this movie. I don't know if they're going to be able to overcome it, but I don't know. It's a good life lesson. I thought that was nice. And that Carol, and then Carol also, while they were in the spaceship, she apologized to Kamala for yelling at her about they can only save so many people. 
I don't know if she should have done that because I think that Carol was right in what she was saying uh, on the Squirrel Refugee Planet. Uh, but, you know, that's, you know, Carol, I can't argue. That's She has to make her own leadership choices. And she's not really making any because Carol clearly doesn't want to be a leader. So I, I respected her strength of character, especially since she wasn't trying to be a leader. I was like, ah, you're not a leader. Okay, then good for you. That was very nice of you. Uh, she just wants to be Carol, which I think this uh, movie makes clear, which is why Kamala's line later in the film uh, about realizing that Kamala needs to stop idolizing Carol and just let Carol be a regular person and recognize that Carol has faults and feelings like everyone else, that was kind of a, a nice bookend to Carol's apology. Uh, but also a nice commentary, I think, on celebrity, particularly female celebrity. I thought that was also very interesting and, and could have been explored more. And while Carol is the most powerful, they did a great job of expanding both Kamala and Monica's powers here. I ended up loving the sequence where Monica learns to fly. But the reason that Monica is forced to learn to fly is because she has to ca catch Kamala who's falling. And Fury telling her to get up there was hilarious. He was like, get up there, get up there right now, right? And in some ways, I think in this movie, he in particular felt like a de facto father or just parent to her because, you know, Monica has been on her own so much. But I think the movie handled the, this learning to fly sequence really well and realistically. Although knowing Iceman, it drove me crazy that Kamala didn't create a spiral slide for herself when she was going down. I was like, I know how to fix this. Don't you read a lot of comics too, Kamala? This is an easy one. I mean, it's like a pop quiz, but you know, from a, a, a test that Kamala has studied her whole life, so she should have known the, known the answers. But she did help to save the scrolls later on with a couple of slides, right? And with a movie level budget, it was nice that Kamala's powers are finally cooler. Her new powers are much cooler and useful. Uh, although when she started to fight with the sash on that musical planet, that was a step too far for me. I'm glad they, they didn't continue with that. As for Monica, as I said in my non-spoiler review, I thought that they used her intangibility extremely well here and far more than they ever have in the comics. But from phasing her hand out of her suit to use her powers, I didn't even know what she was doing at first. I was like, what's going on with your hand? And then I figured it out. Uh, to to uh, being how she flies. Like, that's how she flies because she turns her whole body into light. That was great. That's why she had trouble still saving Kamala even when she reached her. She really didn't save Kamala. She just kind of was there, ended up being there for emotional support and learned to fly. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, Monica also used her intangibility in her fights to get around and past opponents. I thought it was really cool uh, and very well realized by the VFX team. And then when she leveled up at the end and got the big hero moment of the movie, I thought that was really nice. Uh, but, and you might be like, but it's Carol's sequel. Why didn't Carol get involved? Well, Carol was involved with the added emotional element. Like I thought it was great when Carol raced and Carol's very fast, but she couldn't get to Monica in time before the, the rip closed uh, you know, uh, around Monica, leaving her stranded in that alternate universe. But Carol trying to reach her in time and realizing that she was going to let Monica down again and abandon her. And, Mon and Monica, I'm sure, on the other side being like, alone again. I mean, I thought that was great. I thought that was a really nice moment. Uh, so that's my overall spoiler review for the Marvels. Uh, sure, it's a little half-baked, but it's a heck of a lot better than it seemed. And I thought it was fun, especially at an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, so share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, stay tuned for my separate videos uh, to break down the two end credit scenes. But until then, you can check out some other videos right now.